And so one that uh, is part of this endocrine system, the pineal gland. It is larger in children than it is in adults. They believe it might play a role in our circadian rhythms, our roughly 24-hour days that were forced upon us. But anyway, um, at night, it is synthesizing uh, melatonin from serotonin, which is another neurotransmitter. And they say, or they're, they're, they're thinking it could affect sexual maturation. Um, it's a gland they still don't know a whole lot about, okay, other than really the, the melatonin. Um, so it's just not a lot of information out there. Now, the thymus. Okay, um, have you ever heard of T cells? Okay, and I don't know how you might have heard of them in relationship to, to what? I don't remember. Okay, has anybody ever heard of T cells? Yes, okay, this is a cell that is part of our immunity. So it comes along with our immune system. But the thymus gland is how we're going to get those cells in around how it's going to be an area where the cells that were made by the blood can come to this gland, get exposed to its hormone, and become a T cell that can make its way to be used in the immune system. In children, the thymus gland is huge. All right. In your text, in your text, um, it'll show a picture of a child versus an adult, and you will see that that gland is taking up a huge portion of the thoracic area. But as we get older, it involutes, meaning it gets smaller, not quite as active. There's a reason for this. <coughs> if the thymus gland is creating T cells, which are important in immunity, when are we building? immunity from basically time of birth forward okay and at the point now as you get older and it gets smaller chances are well I guess I guess we're hoping that we've been exposed to a, a lot of the viruses that we're going to get exposed to, and we will have used those T cells to build immunity. So, you know, children, they when they're born, they have a little bit of the immunity from their mom, okay? But then they have to start building their own immunity. So they get like their vaccinations, um, depending upon how much stuff they're exposed to, like other people, places, daycare center, all that sort of stuff, will determine how busy the thymus gland is. Okay, so it is the it is the gland that the T cells formed in the blood make their way to to mature. It releases a hormone. Um, and it will cause those T cells to mature, and those T cells, they will go out into the bloodstream and make their way to like lymph nodes and stuff, and they'll kind of be there ready. And then they'll build memory cells. So the thymus gland is important, but as we get older, not quite as active. Um, but hopefully you've built up your immune system, okay? But as we know,
<laughs> Seems like we're coming along with many new viruses now that we haven't been exposed to. Okay, so we'll just see how th those things play out. It can help um, stimulate development of other lymphatic organs. The thyroid gland, as an adult, it is our largest endocrine gland. It is very well vascularized. The blood flow is very good to this organ. <coughs> the structure of the organ is responsible for the hormones. So, here we go with that term again, follicles, and I can't remember if I have a picture. I don't think I do. So, those, so that those follicles, okay, when you look at the thyroid gland, it will look like that thyroid gland is filled with like a gel-like substance in the middle. So it'll look like it's got this jelly type substance. There'll be little cells to the outside of this follicle. And when we look at this structure, okay, what, what we see is that gel-filled substance is a protein-rich colloid. <clears throat> Do you happen to remember the term colloid? That, that was um, probably introduced in part one. And a colloid is where you have a substance and materials are suspended in it. Okay? And this one is protein. The follicles, the cells that we see running along the edges, secrete thyroid hormone. Now, anyone in here have thyroid problems or know someone who might? Okay, that's a good show of hands. That lets me know because it's, it's very true. People with thyroid problems, it's pretty prevalent in, in, you know, in society. People will have maybe hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, okay? The hormones of the thyroid gland, they are important to metabolic activities of the cells. Now, if you remember, what's the definition of metabolism? Well, when we talk about metabolism, it's referring to our chemical reactions of the body, meaning breaking something down, building something up, the sum of all of that is metabolism, okay? All <clears throat> chemical reactions, that's metabolism. So, the thyroid hormone, it is, it's important because of affecting the body's metabolic rate, but it has to be in a certain form. So, it's really odd. 90% is tetra for iodo for the four iodines, thyronine the chemical. So it's termed T4. 
Only a small portion is tri-iota, three iodines, the more potent formula. Hmm. What this is telling me, and a lot of times when people get blood work done, they will test for both T4 and T3 because T3 is my active form. T3 is the active form, meaning it will be doing the work. T4 which is produced the most, but remember, these chemicals are released into the bloodstream. This hormone is active on most cells of the body. We may not need every bit released to be ready to act. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So if I'm looking at the 100% production, and if thyroid hormone is pretty much needed all the time, <clears throat> I wouldn't say all the time, most of the time, okay? 10% is good to go. 10% can go to the cells of the body, and that will be great, keeps everything going. But this rest of the production, because I, my body works on negative feedback, I might not need, let's say this was a 100 molecules. Those 10 molecules that are already active might be all the body needs. I might not need those other 90 molecules. Those 90 molecules might just need to circulate around in my bloodstream, and then if a cell needs it or the body needs it, we can convert it. So there, there is kind of like, like an action potential for that, like, like being ready to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the T4 is really of little value unless the body converts it to the T3 if needed. And it will do that based upon my metabolic needs. If I'm not doing a lot of activity, if my cells are not really <coughs> active, if things are not really going, you know, just bada bing, bada boom, all in the body, okay, I might not need it all. So, it might just need to circulate, and if needed, it can get to the liver, and the liver might just be like, okay, just disassemble and go back to work. Go back, and we'll just wait for the thyroid gland to produce some more. So, it uses T3 first because it's more potent, but if it needs more, then it uses T4. Right? T4 is ready. Okay. T4 can be converted to T3. Okay. Yep. Based on those, iodines. So that tells me something important, okay? Because iodine is a salt. And before we knew, well, we get it, it usually you'll see salt, say it's iodized, for example, okay? Now you go to the store, you got all these different types of salts. They'll tell you they're not a source of iodine. Okay, so if you're looking for having to get iodine, you want to make sure you buy the salt that says it's a source of iodine. I that was iodide, not iodine. Well, I'm calling it iodine because of the chemical on the um, periodic table. But we do know that that's iodide and it's in the salt. Yes. Yeah. I should have made that clear. So, so, before we knew that.